Generally speaking, I would say that conservatives, real conservatives, deeply care about the three transcendentals. We care about the good, the true, and the beautiful. Of course, we can debate each other endlessly about what the substance of these three concepts should be. But I don't think that at this point in time, that's what really matters. What matters is that we believe in the concept of them. We believe that there is something as morality, that there is something as truth, and that there is something as beauty. You see, we believe in the metaphysical concept of these things. But we are a dying breed. Why? Because there is an institutionalized attack carried out on everything that we believe to be fundamentally important and even just normal. This attack has been so successful that we're left with an entire generation of people that is no longer able to trust its own judgment and the reality that they perceive with their own eyes. At least not in a common sense way that our forefathers have done for thousands and thousands of years on end. We've all seen and heard the examples. We've seen that Facebook has listed 73 genders for you to choose from. We've seen people advocate now that two plus two equals four is a racist concept. What was once up is now down and vice versa. But what are the real life consequences of living in this upside down world? What is the fate of a society that is no longer able to acknowledge the value of traditional wisdom and thinking? A popular saying goes, believe in nothing and you'll fall for anything. And as much as this might sound like a cliche, I think it's actually very true. The permanent state of confusion, disorientation, and isolation that Western man now lives in is exactly the fate that the global elites have in mind for us. Customs, craftsmanship, Tradition, all of these things that used to be the landmarks for Western men that gave us guidance, a sense of self, identity, they've all been willfully attacked and some might say destroyed. It's not difficult to guess why though. The global elites want to turn us into docile, mindless consumers who listen to what they say and buy what they offer. They achieve this by controlling the institutions, the media, the big tech companies, which have successfully been turned into institutes and instruments of proper brainwashing and uprooting. And here we are. We live in a world where stating that there are just two sexes can get you hunted down and fired from your job. We live in a world where saying that immigration should be controlled and gone through legal routes can get you branded as a far-right extremist. We live in a world where opposing the, opposing the teaching of critical race theory in schools might get you labeled by the President of the United States as a potential domestic terrorist. But it doesn't stop there. Cancel culture that was until now mainly exercised by political activists is now rapidly becoming part of our legal system. In Holland, a law has, has recently come into effect that makes it possible for our legal system to ban so-called anti-democratic and subversive organizations. A judge can order the cessation of these, action, of these organizations, allocate their funds to the state, and put members in jail up for two years. And who do you think these so-called subversive organizations are? violent anti-fascists who terrorize their opponents, Islamic extremists who bomb people in the street? Not quite. Ladies and gentlemen, just this week, our national security agency came forward with a statement that the biggest national threat that we should be looking at right now is far-right extremists in the form of young people talking online. Ladies and gentlemen, so far I've tried to convey two points to you. First, the coordinated attack on our identity, culture and traditions in order to uproot Europeans from their sense of self. 
And second, the ever-growing infiltration of the state into our private lives. Uprooting people, confusing them, isolating them, and making them completely dependent on you is, of course, a fantastic strategy if you want to stay in power. We conservatives, we know this better than anyone. We've been fighting their globalist Marxist agenda for years. Oh, nothing, and you'll be happy, they said. Whilst they've been printing money into oblivion, resulting in you and I having ever less purchasing power. Multiculturalism will enrich your life, they said, whilst our country's changed beyond recognition in less than 10 years. We should all be feminists, they said, as they pit the sexes against each other and shame people for wanting traditional lives. We have all been fighting this. As a matter of fact, we've been talking about basically nothing else for these past two days. But if I'm being honest, all of these discussions seem completely trivial to me at this time. Sure, I can talk about woke terror in universities. I can talk about cancel culture and about the fact that the left-wing media is mean to me. But why would I talk about wokeness in university if soon I am not legally allowed to enter university? Why would I talk about protecting our national heritage if soon I can't legally enter a museum? Why would I talk about purchasing power when soon I can't legally enter a restaurant, a store, or even my workplace in order to make that money that I need to do those things to begin with? Because that, ladies and gentlemen, is my rea reality. And it's the reality of the 1.5 million of my fellow countrymen who have refused to take an experimental vaccine that most of them do not need. We have officially been made into second-class citizens. We aren't just experiencing the kind of social exclusion that we conservatives have been fighting for years. We are experiencing actual, legal exclusion from everyday life in a way that has been absolutely unprecedented up until, well, that last time. And I know that I might make you uncomfortable by saying that. I know that's not something that you want to hear. I'm pretty sure that most of you want to believe that I'm exaggerating even. And that's exactly the problem. As Baudelaire once said, the greatest trick that the devil has ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. And that's exactly right. The biggest danger that threatens the West right now is the fact that we wouldn't recognize totalitarianism if it hit us in the face. We believe that the things that happen elsewhere in the world would never happen here in the free West. But they will, and they already are. Because ladies and gentlemen, they're boiling the frog, and I hate to bring it to you, but we're the frog. And don't be fooled. Don't think that because you are vaccinated that this won't affect you. If you do, you're being dangerously short-sighted. Because we need to think about what the president is that's being said here. We need to think about the tendencies that are below this, that are unfolding right in front of our eyes. Our most fundamental constitutional rights are being set aside without an end date, and you best believe that no human rights agency is fighting for us. Those natural God-given rights that we thought we had, like medical privacy, freedom of movement, and bodily integrity, boom out of the window, all under the pretext of public health, of course. And boy, isn't it smart, because who wants to be against public health? We all want to protect other people from dying, right? The goal sounds good. It sounds noble. But if you allow any pretext that sounds noble to set aside your constitutional rights, then you have no constitutional rights. But the people who rule us do not want you to see this. They want to pit people against each other. They want to incite fear. They want to divide and conquer. I guess what I'm saying is, don't think that they won't do this to you. 
if we accept the fact that a QR code grants us access to society, what makes you think that they won't link that to anything else except for your vaccination status? What if that green screen on your phone that grants you access to society turns red the moment you take a flight too many, or you uh, eat meat too much, or you didn't recycle your plastic yesterday, how dare you? What if that green screen on your phone that is linked to your digital wallet that's filled with nothing more but, <laughs> I'm gonna say it, central bank digital currencies will turn red the moment you say something that the government classifies as hate speech. What if they can turn off your life at the push of one button? If they can do it in China, they can do it here. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom that is limited to those who do and say exactly what the government wants them to do and say is no freedom. It's freedom dressed, it's imprisonment dressed up as freedom. And we need to see it for what it is. If we want to turn this around, that is. We need to wake up. We need to speak up. We need to say no, draw a line, and disobey these laws. Because lex in justa, non est lex. Because when something as fundamental as our freedom is at stake, then just hoping that things will turn out all right is not enough. We don't just have the duty to protect our past from destruction. We conservatives have the duty to protect our future from destruction too. Thank you very much.